one of the things that I think has always led to the Austrian tradition being so rich and vibrant was, you know, you know obviously back at in, you know, the University of Vienna, you didn't you know, simply specialize in economists. You know, Mises studied law and he studied history, he studied philosophy and the like, that it is precisely the contributions that Austrian thought provides, not simply to economics narrowly, but to political science, um, as Ryan McMakin often argues, to history, to these other social disciplines, that you need all of them to really defend any of them. That simply defending things on purely economic grounds isn't enough, particularly when the other side is able to you know, just kind of pitch their own very simplistic narrative. We have to have our own pushback at, you know, against that. And that, that's why I think, again, that this liberty versus power narrative is so important providing that, 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 that important lens, right? When we think about Marxism, for example, it's, it's his class theory really is what has, has I think, kind of continued that tradition. No, no matter uh, the failings of socialism in a practical realm, it's that, that politics of envy, that uh, of, of, you know, the, the proletariat versus the bourgeoisie that has now been kind of remade made over in so many different ways, you know, cultural Marxism, et cetera, et cetera. But it's this constant oppressor versus oppressor, or oppressor versus the oppressed dynamic that continues to give fuel to his cause. It is precisely what Rothbard does with his history that I think keeps this dynamic flame alive in this framework. And so you know, do, do you think that we need more historians, more social scientists broadly to help kind of keep the Austrian tradition alive today, uh, keep it thriving today? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think history, uh, philosophy, political science, very important. I think we need more historians. I think history in particular. Uh, at the Supporter Summit, I, uh, when the book was released, Cronyism was released, I explained, you know, I, I, I gave at least my case for why uh, why someone in 2021 would profit by, from reading a book that ends in 1849, right? So what's the what, what could someone learn? And I explained, well, history provides lots of case studies of cronyism or of the free market or the quasi-free market working. History can all, is also interesting, so it's, it's easy to engage people. Economics can be very theoretically abstract. OK, uh, then there's also, you know, again, modern uh, the modern political battles on the other side. You know, the other side is waging their various political battles using history. We've seen this with the 1619 project and other things. So uh, in order to influence someone on current events, such as on inflation, people are looking back on the 1970s. Uh, then again, you have someone, Paul Krugman, looking back, oh, the inflation after World War II, et cetera. So in order to basically, uh, you know, illuminate our perspective on the present, we have to look back at the past. OK. Um, and then the last uh, reason I gave was I think that I said, uh, you know, there, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You had reform movements in the past. But all of that was trying to emphasize the importance of history, why we need uh, historians, et cetera, because this you know, history is how we learn your average person. They have an anti-capitalist pro-interventionist bias because of uh, the, the various history classes they've they've taken, right? Or they've slowly been ingrained with, you know, oh, of course we all need to wear face masks because if we didn't wear face masks and the government didn't take care of our health, well, we'd still have rats falling into, you know, being made into sausages and, and, and uh, you know, of people falling into vats that were turned into meat and all sorts of stuff like that. So that's very important. Uh, history is a crucial discipline that needs to be, uh, basically continue to defend. This relates to something Rothbard had described as at various points in time as a science of liberty. It might be more accurately described as sciences, sciences of liberty, but it was his way of describing the overarching uh, framework of libertarianism, which not only included economic history, also, excuse me, not only included economic theory, but also included history, economic history, political science, sociology, etc., and showing how all of these disciplines kind of reinforce 
uh, each other and support this idea of a voluntary society the, that the free market uh, provides the great the greatest human flourishing uh, as opposed to the government, etc. So it's important to realize that it's it's a unified uh, it's it's a unified front, so to speak. You, you have to be moving along on all the frontiers in order to really accomplish your objectives.